right? So um, in a statistical argument, it'll say that X percent of a property is present in a population. So it'll usually be expressed this way. So X percent, whatever percent of a certain property present in the stated population. So here's some examples. 18% of Americans smoke. 40% uh, of the people in France are overweight. I'm not sure when these statistics are from, but it's surprising that more people in France are overweight than Americans. 35% of Americans are overweight. 1.4% of children who have, um, are children who have autism spectrum disorder. So this is all 18% um, of the property. 18% of the property smokers are present in the population Americans. 40% of the property being overweight is present in the population French people. 35% property being overweight pro uh, po population Americans. 1.4% of the property autism spectrum disorder in children. It uh, doesn't specify um, children in the United States, it's just children everywhere. So um, we're going to talk about these Things, measured property, target property, sample population, and target population. So, um, so let's talk about the difference between sample and target population. So because um, it's unrealistic, most of the time it's unrealistic to um, measure or to examine every single a member of the target population, you select a subpopulation, a sample population. So a sample population is a subset um, of the target population. So suppose you want to know how many French people are overweight. You can't go around to every single French person and weigh them. So you take a subset of the French population um, and weigh them. That's a sample population. So the sample population must be representative. And this is really common sense. Uh, if you are trying to figure out what percentage of French people are overweight, um, you don't go and do your um, do your surveys at the gym because <laughs> you'll get a skewed uh, a skewed sample, or uh, you don't do it in urban Paris. Um, if you want to know what percentage of all French people are overweight, you'd have to make sure your sample is representative. So. Uh, representativeness, the sample population must represent or resemble the target population in ways that are relevant to the property being measured. So a large randomized sample of people from different areas of the country with different ethnic, cultural, and economic profiles that matches the whole country. So if you want to know how much time Americans are spending on Facebook um, and you just, um, you just did your sample in rural Indiana, and you have, here I have um, an Amish family, um, you're going to not get an accurate, um, an accurate statistic on the amount of time Americans are spending on Facebook if you just um, survey Amish people. Um, for those of you that don't know, Amish people, or a lot of Amish people don't use uh, high-tech gadgets. So. Um, you want to make sure that your sample is representative in the ways that matter. Okay, so um, okay, so here we're going to talk about. Um, there's a target property in the target property and the measured property. Okay, so um, here's your target population, 300 million Americans. Here's your sample population, about 3,500 people. Uh, that's about the number that um, Gallup, polls, um, Gallup polls take for um, when they're uh, generalizing about all Americans. So um, there's a difference between the target property and the measured property. The target property is um, what we're trying to get at. So suppose we're trying to figure out what percentage of Americans are obese. Um, the target population is Americans. The target property is obeseness. Um, the measured property is how we figure out the actual thing we're trying to get at, which is obeseness. So um, a measured property it could be, it's just the way that we figure that out or measure it. So. Um, the measured property could be just grabbing people off the street uh, of New York and, and weighing them. 
Um, it could be giving people um, a dunk test to, to do um, to measure body fat. Um, that's when you submerge someone in a in a tank of water. Or you could just um, do a phone survey and ask people over the phone if they're overweight. You could have people check off a box. Um, so the measured property is the way that you measure um, what you're actually getting at. Okay, so. Um, a lot of times uh, surveys go wrong because um, the measurements differ from the target property. So you can imagine if you call people up on the phone and ask them, hey, are you overweight? They'll probably say no. They'll probably say no. So um, you're trying to get at um, the percentage of people that are actually overweight. If you measure it by asking them over the phone, you probably won't get um, an accurate representation. So. Um, here's the difference between measured properties and target properties. So, um, suppose you want to figure out how many bikes are stolen on campus, and the way you measure it is um, you look at reported bike people who have reported bike theft to the police. So here you can see a problem already. Um, the measured property is going to undervalue. Um, so people who report their bikes stolen are a lot less than people who have their bikes actually stolen. So this is not, um, the measured property is going to be um, undervalue um, what's actually the case. Um, how about this, reported rape or sexual assault? Um, that's the measured property. What you're really trying to find out is how many students or how many people in the city were raped or sexually assaulted. And again, the measured property is going to be off. You're not going to get, um, an accurate measure of your target property if you just look at reported rapes and sexual assaults because um, uh, statistically um, uh, only one in four um, sexual assaults are reported. Um, what if you're trying to figure out um, how many people have affairs? Um, and the way you do that is people who report having aff affairs on a questionnaire um, it may probably a lot of people won't even admit, admit it if it's uh, even if it's on a, um, a confidential questionnaire. Um, target property voted for Hillary. Reported that they would vote for Hillary. This is on here because last semester I gave this lecture the day after the election, and we were talking about uh, why the polls were off and um, so perhaps people were reporting that they would vote for Hillary um, when they actually obviously did not go out and vote for Hillary. Um, so the the poll said that Hillary was way ahead where she um, definitely was not. Um, people discovered 24 hours later. Um, here's another one. Um, you believe that life evolved on Earth is different than actually believing that life evolved on Earth is different from um, checking a box that says that you believe that life is on Earth. Um, again, here's a measured property testing positive for Ebola, having Ebola. Um, so um, this would be more accurate, the measured property to the, um, the target property. And then finally, um, reporting that you have an STD um, obviously is going to be different than um, actually having one. So it's important to look at how the surveys are taken, how the questions are taken, um, to see if the statistics really are accurate. So in order for um, a statistical argument to be strong, to be reliable, the measured property should be an accurate indicator of the target property. So if you ask, suppose that you tried to, um, I don't know, figure out what percentage of UNLV students had STDs by going into an auditorium and asking people to raise their hand if they had an STD. Um, that would not be, obviously, the, the measurement, the target, <laughs> that's the measured property is not going to um, be even close to the target property. Um, people will not raise their hands. Um, a better way would be to fill out an anonymous questionnaire. So the way that you measure something is really important. So again, another thing to be aware of is a margin of error. Uh, the margin of error is the extent to which researchers believe the presence of the target property and the target population may vary from the presence of the measured property in the sample population. 
So um, it's very typical, a 3% margin of error. That's the margin of error in Gallup polls. So for example, if um, uh, your, your statistics say that 18% of the sample population um, smoke, it could be that anywhere from 15, um, 18 minus 3, to 18 plus 3, 15 to 21 percent of the um, of the target population has the um, the target property. 15 to 21 percent of American smoke. Okay, so let's review some of these definitions. The sample population is the group of objects that the study actually measures. The target population, the larger, the largest group of objects the study seeks to draw a conclusion about. The measured property, the property or feature, and the sample population that is actually measured in the study in question. The target property is the property or feature in the target population that is central to the overall argument, so it's actually what you're trying to get at. Um, the percentage of smokers smoking in the, um, in the target population. Okay, so here's an example um, of a um, statistical um, survey on surviving lung cancer. Here in a broad survey of the medical records of more than 10,000 cancer patients across the country, researchers at Johns Hopkins have concluded that 82% of stage zero lung cancer patients whose cancer is detected early survive. Over the course of several years, the records of 10,452 patients were carefully reviewed to determine at what stage the cancer was detected, how it was treated, and what the survival rates were. Early detection was defined as cancer that was confined to a small area of one lung. Survival was defined to mean surviving five or more years after diagnosis. So, um, so here's the study, the survey, Okay, here's the conclusion. 82% of people with stage zero lung cancer survive. The sample population was 10,452 patients at Johns Hopkins. The measured property was the, uh, the medical files. That's the way they measured um, the survival. The target population is um, all people. All people who have lung cancer that is detected early and the target property is survival of five or more years. Now look, now suppose that, um, okay, so here, here's a graphic representation of this. So here's the target population. 82% um, of lung cancer victims survive. So um, we want to generalize this to the, to the population. Look, if you um, have early stage lung cancer, it's detected early, then you'll survive. Here's the sample population. So compare the statistical approach with the anecdotal approach. So suppose um, you get um, you get diagnosed with early stage, stage lung cancer, and you tell someone at work, and they say, "Oh man, I know someone who had early stage lung cancer, and they died." Um, that's going to make you feel as if um, you don't really have much of a chance. But um, and it'll make it seem like that for that person, if you know someone who's had early stage lung cancer and, di and they, they died. But look, um, here if you look at the statistical, um, the statistical study, the statistical argument, um, really it shows that you have a very good chance of surviving if you, um, if you detect your lung cancer early. So here look, here's the structure of statistical argument. In a group of 75,000 people, 21% of them smoke cigarette, um, one cigarette a day. Um, oftentimes, the conclusion will just, um, they'll skip premises two and three and just say, therefore, 21% of all Americans smoke one cigarette a day. But it's important um, if you looked at, at um, a more detailed account of the, the survey, uh, they'll fill in these other premises. So. Um, premise two, the composition of the group is representative of the target population, and three, the measured property is an accurate measure of the target property. So um, they'll try to defend that the way they um, measured a person's how much people smoke um, actually reflected how much they did smoke. So asking how much you smoke is the same as how much you do smoke. 
Okay, so here's our summary of eight concepts. Sample population, the group or object the study actually measures, target population, the largest or larger group, group of objects that the study seeks to draw a conclusion about, the measured property, the property or feature in the sample population that is actually measured in the study in question, the target property, the property or feature in the target population that is central to the overall argument, the accuracy, the measured property must accurately indicate the target property. Uh, representativeness, the sample population must represent or resemble the target population with regard to um, other properties that are connected to the property in question. And then the margin of error, the extent to which the target population varies from the presence of the margin property in the sample population. And then random sampling. If a sample population is randomly sampled from the target population, that means that every member of the target population had an equal chance of being chosen for the